Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the City of Madeira Beach Code Enforcement Hearing. My name is Bart Valdez, and I'm the appointed Special Magistrate to hear today's cases. I'm a practicing attorney and have been a member of the Florida Bar for over 20 years. I have been appointed to this position in accordance with the authority set forth in Chapter 162, Florida Statutes. It is my role to fairly and objectively review the matters presented. As such, I would like to advise you of certain matters related to today's proceedings. Today's matters will be heard in the order that they appear on the agenda. Every effort will be made to hear all persons having relevant evidence, argument, or comments to offer related to the specific case that is being heard. If you wish to speak today, it is necessary that you be sworn in in just a few moments. In all cases, since the city has the burden of proof, the city will present its case first. The respondent or property owner then will be given the opportunity to refute the city's allegations. Formal rules of evidence do not apply to this proceeding. However, I will exert every effort to ensure that fundamental fairness is afforded to all parties. After hearing all relevant evidence, I will issue an order. The order will thereafter be reduced to writing, and you will be provided with a copy by mail. Therefore, please make sure we have your correct address. Additionally, you are advised that I do not have the authority to grant you a variance, permit, or special exception of any kind. My role is solely to determine whether a city code has been violated and to provide you a reasonable time to correct the violation by whatever means is available to you. Please be advised that you may be subject to a fine and a lien may be recorded on your property if the violation is not corrected by the compliance deadline. If you wish to present any information to me today, it is necessary that you swear or affirm that you will tell the truth. Therefore, at this point in time, the city attorney will swear in any witnesses, and this includes any members of the public that intend to speak today. If you'd stand up, raise your right hand, I'm going to swear you under oath. Anyone that's going to speak today? Swear the testimony you're about to give is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay, thank you. All right, and just a, a comment on the agenda before we get started. There are two code enforcement matters today. It looks like there was a variance for 14050 West Parsley Drive. That's been proposed, uh, postponed, right, Mr. That's Trask? correct. All right, so if you are here for the variance today, that matter has been uh, postponed and will not be heard on today's agenda. So with that, we'll start with the first code enforcement case, which is 2023. 0.3709 for the property located at 14906 North Bayshore Drive. Is the city ready to proceed? We are. Go ahead, Mr. Trask. The city would call Grace Mills as its witness in this code enforcement case. Grace, uh, if you could state your occupation, your job responsibilities here at the city. Um, I'm Grace Mills, code compliance officer for the city. Um, I deal with unpermitted work and um, issuing permits through the billing department. Okay, are you familiar with this property located at 14906 North Bayshore Drive here in Madeira Beach? I am, yes. Oh, okay. Did you do some type of proactive code enforcement on this case? Yes, it was proactive. Okay. Who's the owner of this property and how do you know that? Um, Kara Ann McKinney. If you look on pages three, four, well, we'll start with pages three and four. This is the property appraiser um, stating the homeowner, Kara Ann McKinney. And then if you go to... Page six of the packet, which is the tax collector, it states the same. All right. On this particular case, can you tell me what the um, whether this is um, actually proactive or reactive uh, code enforcement case? Um, it would be proactive. Okay. And you, so you did not receive a complaint from anyone. Correct. Okay. And um, if you could tell me what code violation did you find at this property located at 14906 North Bayshore? Um, it was replacement of deck without proper permitting. Okay. Um, so you were just driving by the property and found that there had been this code violation? Yes, without a permit. Okay. So uh, when you went by the property, what, did ex what was it that you saw that brought it to your attention? Um, in pages 10 and 11 of the packet reflect the new deck that had been done. Um, and in page 9, that's just a Google image from December 2022 reflecting the old doc, or deck. Excuse me. Okay. This is really difficult to determine looking at this photograph. So if we were looking at the photograph then between the two pieces of white fence, is that wood portion on the ground is that what we're talking about yes it's kind of hard to see from the image but the reddish on the right hand side okay and that's the way it looked prior to the deck being replaced correct correct okay 
And then this next photograph, can you point out exactly where it is? Behind the black truck is one view of it. There's another side from the other side of the black truck. Okay. Why is that a violation of the city code and what code section is it? It's uh, section 8652 for when required. Let me get to that part of the letter that was sent out um, for work that requires permitting. Okay, so once you went out to the property, found that there was a violation, found out who the property owner was pursuant to the tax collector's office or property appraiser's office, did you issue a courtesy notice of code violation? I did, yes, on November 15th of 2023. Okay, and this courtesy notice of violation, was that sent by regular mail or certified mail? How was it actually sent? The courtesy was regular mail. Okay. Um, in the packet, it's listed in pages 7 and 8. It doesn't show that the letter was actually signed in the one that's in the packet. Was the letter that was sent in the mail signed by you? It was, yes. This was just the copy saved um, prior to signature, but the sent has a signature on it, yes. Okay, and in this particular um, courtesy letter, did you tell the property owner what the violation was and what corrective action needed to take place? Yes, on page 8 that's up on the screen, it states the decking on property without required building permits um, is the detail, and the corrective action is to obtain for permitting. Okay, did you give the property owner a return date or a compliance date uh, when the letter was issued on November 15th? Um, from the first courtesy letter, the follow-up date was November 29th, 2023. Was it brought into compliance as of November 29th? It was not. Okay, did you go out to the property and inspect on November 29th? Um, in our daily drive-bys, yes, and there had been no permit um, completed at that time. Okay, so did you issue then a uh, notice of code violation? Yes. And is that what's shown on pages 12 and 13? Yes, it was sent. Um, the notice of code violation was sent November 29th of 2023. And this code violation notices the same code section as being the one that's violated, 86-52? That's correct. Okay. And this letter on page 13 does not show that it was signed. Was the original that was sent to the property owner signed? Yes. Okay. And pages uh, 14, 15, and 16, are those the photographs that we had looked at once before? That's correct. Okay. Showing page 14 is the old deck and 15 and 16 is the new deck? Correct. Okay. Did you send this letter by certified mail? Yes. Okay. Did you also send it by regular mail? Um, the second letter was just certified. Okay. And did you um, receive the green card back on this one? Um, not from the certified, no. What was your next activity on this particular file? Scroll down into the packet. Shows the sent certifieds. Um, the next would have been the statement of violation and request of hearing that was done June 14th of 2024. Okay, before we get to that one, had, had you received any type of correspondence, telephone calls, emails, or the like from the property owner to discuss the violation on the property? Yes, um, we have emails that had originated November 28th um, from the property owner, Kara McKinney, letting me know that she's writing in response to the violation letter um, and how to bring it into compliance. Okay, when was the last activity correspondence-wise between the city and the property owner? Via email, it was um, November 29th, 2023. Okay, can you tell us the reason why we are not, did not move forward on this case until June 14th uh, when the statement of violation was issued? Yes, we um, just in the way that the cases fall to bring them to the magistrate, this was in uh, an order, so it was the next up in June. Okay. So you issued then the statement of violation, a request for hearing on June 14th, and that's listed at pages 19 and 20, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And you also issued a notice of hearing for today's hearing on pages 21 and through 24, is that correct? I'm sorry, 22? 21 through 22, yes. All right. And how did you serve the notice of hearing and the statement of violation? They were sent regular mail, certified mail, and posted at the property. Okay. Did you also post it here at City Hall? Yes. 
Okay. And is that reflected in your amended affidavit of service, which is on pages 23 and 24? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Have you received the green card back on this case? I have, yes. Okay. And um, do you have a copy of that? Or I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, for this case, no, I do not. Okay. All right. So when you posted the property, though, you took a photograph of the posting, correct? That's correct. And it, is that on page 27? That's correct. And is that, that's kind of a better picture of the deck, too. You can see the whole deck, correct? Correct. All right. Um, and, and the photograph on page 28 is what? That is the posting at City Hall. Okay. Is the property in compliance as of today? As of today, no. Okay. How much time do you think it would take to bring this property into compliance by getting after the fact building permit? Um, the city would find 10 days. Okay. All right. Um, I don't have any other questions of Grace. I would um, tender her over to the property owner if she's present. All right, I'll go ahead and accept into evidence as exhibit number one, page three through page 28 of the agenda packet. Ms. Mills, just a, a couple of clarifying questions. Is the, what type of deck is that? Is it wood, is it paver? What, what kind of deck is that, do you know? I believe just from appearance it would be wood. All right, and the corrective action would be to come in to City Hall and get a permit, after the fact permit for that, or I guess remove that deck? That's correct. Is there anything that would prevent the homeowner or the respondent from coming in and getting a permit for that that deck? In, in the way, in other words, I mean, can that deck be permitted? I guess is a better way to put it. Yes, there is an active permit request for it to be permitted. It's just, um, it just has not been completed from the um, applicant. All right. Is Ms. McKinney here or anybody here on behalf of the respondent? All right, come on forward. All right, ma'am, are you um, Kara Ann McKinney? Yes, I am. All right. Ma'am, the way that we conduct these hearings is you have the right to cross-examine or ask questions of Ms. Mills based on her testimony, and that's the part of the hearing we're having right now. In just a few moments, I'm going to give you another opportunity to tell me directly anything that you want to tell me about this code violation. You can call your own witnesses. You can show me any documents or anything like that. But right now, this is your opportunity to ask Ms. Mills any questions. You don't have to ask her questions if you don't want to, but if you want to cross-examine her, you have that right to do so now. Do you have any questions for Ms. Mills? Yes. All right, go ahead. Um, you said there was an open permit request. Um, is the name on it Cody Ball, the general contractor that did the work? I'm not aware. I can look it up. I only ask because he, he told me that he did apply for it. Yeah. The contractor's name is Dream Space Contracting. Yeah, that's his company. Okay, great. Uh, when did he apply for that? November 29th of 2023 is when it was created. And what is not finished? Um, they have requested a signed contract for FEMA retention that has not been sent in. A, re a signed contract for what? FEMA retention, um, the building officials requesting a signed contract for the work. Oh, so something to do with FEMA? I'm assuming so from the notes, yes. Okay, I don't, I don't know what that is. I hope he does. Okay, that's all the questions I had for Ms. Grace. Ms. Grace. Okay, ma'am, don't, uh, don't go far because I, Ms. Mills may be the city's only witness, so hold on. Uh, Mr. Trask, anybody else? I don't have anybody else, but I just got a short redirect. Yes, please okay. go ahead. So what the city is looking for is the contract that was signed between the contractor who built the deck and the property owner, correct? Correct, yes. Uh, okay. 
So if, she, if the property owner was to submit that contract to the city, it would move the application forward through the uh, process, correct? Uh, it's one of the requirements, so it would need to be submitted and reviewed. Um, if there were no issues with it, then yes. Okay. Are there any other things that were listed on the permit application that the property owner needs to provide to the city to move forward? Um, on the 17th of this month, the survey was re-uploaded. Um, it looks like it's been reviewed, so I think as of right now, the contract's the only outstanding thing. In All right. Thank you. No other questions. Oh, can I just ask one more thing? Uh, yeah, well, now is your opportunity to, you want to ask Ms. Mills another question? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so the contract you need is between myself and the, the contractor, Correct. not the FEMA thing. No, we just need to hold it for FEMA retention through the building department. We just need the contract between you and the contractor for the work. Well, I can do that. <laughs> I'd like to hear that. All right. Uh, Ms. McKinney, having heard that, this is your opportunity in the hearing to tell me anything you'd like to tell me. Uh, present any documents, call any witnesses. So what would you like to tell me about this code violation? Um, first of all, I would like to apologize for having it gone on this long. Um, I dropped the ball. I thought the contractor was taking care of it, and um, he wasn't. Um, and I, yeah, I replaced the jack that was rotten and I hired a general contractor to do it because I knew if it needed a permit pulled, he would be able to do that. And that's what happened. All right, I understand. Mr. Trask, any questions? Just a few. So um, was the entire deck replaced in that, in that area? We took out the old one, put the new one in the exact same location? Yes. You didn't expand the area of the deck, correct? No. Okay. Um, and what it was installed by your contractor in, his, in the contract that you have with him, does it provide that he is to obtain the building permit? Yes. You, you, look, you had a question in your face when you said that. You don't, do you know or not know? Yes. If okay. there was to be a permit, if there needed to be a permit pulled, he was supposed to pull it. Okay. And how long would it take for you to get a copy of that contract between you and your contractor to the city? Um, Can you do that in the next day or so? Yeah, Okay. right away. Do you have it with you today? Um, I have it in my email. I do not have a hard printed copy. Okay. All right. So if you could bring a hard copy to the city, we can move forward. And you think you can do that in the next day or so? Sure. Okay. I'll do it today. Okay. I have no other questions. Thank you. All right, ma'am. Uh, anything else that you want to tell me today? Um, after the contract is submitted, someone will come out and inspect? Or how does that work? You'll need to talk to Ms. Mills about that after the hearing. You can uh, just stay here, and I'm sure the next hearing won't last too long, and then she can walk you through that process. But it sounds to me like you know, you know, there's not a, a whole lot you have to do. Are you still in contact with your contractor? Um, I was Friday. Okay, good. So that's uh, that's good. Um, well, ma'am, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, you, you think you can get this done in 10 days? I just want to make sure that you know, it's enough time. I know we've got 4th of July coming up and everything like I that. I can bring the contract. If that's okay. all that's needed from me, I can absolutely do that. All right. Uh, ma'am, we're going to open up to public comment. Is there anything else you want to tell me right now? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You can have a seat. All right, at this point in time, we will hear any member of the public who has any direct knowledge in regard to this violation. Any members of the public that want to comment on case 2023.3709 for the property at 14906 North Bayshore Drive. Okay, seeing none, we'll close public comment. Uh, Mr. Trask, anything else? Uh, the city would just ask that you give the property owner 10 days to come into compliance with that uh, code section 86-52. Should she fail to bring the property into compliance within that 10-day period of time, levy a fine of $100 a day for each day that the property remains in non-compliance. All right. Thank you, Mr. Trask. Okay. Based upon uh, the testimony provided by the city and the admission to the violation by Ms. McKinney, I'm going to go ahead and find the property is in violation. Ma'am, I'm going to give you 10 days to get this cured. After that, it'll be a $100 a day fine. If, however, 
uh, something happens and there's just a, you, you need more time or something like that, then you can always come back to see me and, and explain why you need more time. And certainly we'll try to be understanding of that. It's good that you have a contractor and it's good that you, um, you know, try to do the right thing. So you just work with your contractor to get the city what they need. Sounds like the building permit will be issued. So uh, sounds like you'll be able to get this uh, violation cured before the fine will ever begin to run. All right, we'll move on to the next case, which is 2023.3711 for the property located at 15301 2nd Street. Is the city ready to proceed? Yes, we are. Go ahead, Mr. Trask. Again, I would call Grace Mills as the city's witness. Grace, is this a proactive case or was it as a result of a complaint? This is proactive. Okay. Um, the property that we're talking about, 15301 2nd Street East, this is the building immediately behind us, correct? That's correct. Okay, across the canal a little bit? Yes. All right. Um, what is the code violation that's being prosecuted under this case? I believe, let me get down to it, the letter. Um, it is 8652, one required. Okay, similar to the first case, this is doing work without a building permit, correct? Correct. Okay. And when I asked you about it being proactive or a complaint, did you actually see work being done on this property? And we'll get to the owner in a little bit, but... Yes. Okay, and what exactly did you see? Um, interior remodel, drywall replacement. Okay. So the property located at 15301 2nd Street East is owned by whom, and how do you know that? Get up there. Um, if you go to the property appraiser in the packet, which starts at page 29, it will reflect the Wolfpack Holdings LLC as the owner of that property. And again, on the tax page, which is page 32, I believe, um, reflects the same Wolfpack Holdings LLC. Is this a single family resident or is it a multi-family type building? It is a multi-family building. Okay, and how many units are there approximately? Looks as if there's eight living units per the property appraiser. Okay. And how many units are having work done on them to, to the best of your knowledge? Um, from the violation that we had witnessed, it was one unit um, per the permit that was submitted. It is all units. Okay. Just make sure I understand. So, so you only found the violation one. Correct. And when a building permit was applied for, they said they were going to be remodeling all eight units. Correct. Okay. All right. So what was the date that you saw the property in violation? And down to that first photo. It would have been November 20th of 2023. Okay, so that's the day that you were at the property then? That's correct. Okay. Um, so when you saw the violation on the property, did you issue a courtesy notice of code violation? I did, yes, and that's reflective on page 33 that was sent November 20th, the same day of 2023. Okay, if we can look at that 33 and 34 then. So on page 34, again, same question as last case, this... Um, particular letter is unsigned in the packet. The, when the original went out, it was a signed letter, correct? Correct. All right. And so did you list the violation and the corrective action that needed to take place in the courtesy notice? I did, yes. The violation details and the um, corrective action of how to bring it into compliance. Did you also state in there a date that you would like the all these items to be accomplished? For the courtesy notice, it was no, um, December 4th, 2023. So that's when you were going to go back and inspect, correct? Correct. Okay. The photograph on page 35, if we can take a look at that for a minute. So what is this photograph depicting? And that is the stop work order on the front of the property. When um, the stop work order was taking place, they did not allow access to the interior. So no interior photos were able to be inspected. Um, so the stop work order was placed, and that's the photo we have of the exterior to prove. Okay, so on the outside of the building, it looks like it's showing an address of 15301, but the photograph reflects an address of 15361. Can you explain the difference? Yes, the program we use for our photos grabs the nearest pinpoint of the address. Um, sometimes when we're in there taking the photo, so sometimes it'll grab an address a few streets down um, or right next to it. Okay, but we're sure that the, this property is located at 15301, correct? Yes, yes. All right. 
Did the property uh, come into compliance by the December 4th date that you had asked in the courtesy, no courtesy notice? No, it did not. Okay. Um, did you then issue a notice of code violation on December the 6th? I did, yes. And is that listed in pages 36 through 38? That's correct. Same question about the signature. This particular letter was also signed. It's just that in the packet we have an unsigned letter. That's correct. And did you, it was the same violation, the same corrective action to be taken in that letter? Yes, with a follow-up date of December 20th, 2023. Okay, and how was this letter um, provided to the owner of the property? The second um, uh, letter was sent certified mail. Okay. Did you um, get a green card back on that particular um, notice? From the certified mailing, no, I did not. All right. So I'd like to turn to page uh, 41. Um, and let's take a look at that photograph for a minute. The letter or the notice of code violation was sent on December the 6th with a follow-up date on December the 20th. What, is, what, what, what were these photos for on, starting on page 41? They were taken January 16th um, after the stop work order had been placed work had continued, um, so we placed a second stop work order. At that time, they did allow us into the first unit to document photos of what was going on. All right. If you could um, start with page 41 and tell us what is happening in each one of these photographs. Um, page, starting on page 41, it looks like a bathroom that's possibly holding some supplies and door material. Um, going down to page 42, appears to be some new drywall, um, a toilet, some light fixtures hanging down. All right, let me stop you right there. That, that toilet is in a room other than a bathroom, correct? Correct. Okay, so it's just sitting on top of that floor. It's, it's not been addressed. It's not been installed. Correct, it's not installed, no. Okay. All right, if you could go to page 43 then. Um, page 43 reflects the second stop work order we posted. The first one was taken down and work had continued, so we documented the second one. Is the stop work order still on the property? I do not believe so at this time. Hmm. All right, let's turn to page 44 then, please. And tell me what is taking place in page 44 and 45, those two photographs. 44 um, appears to depict a hallway with some more um, work material. And 45 appears to show, again, some more work material, um, excess doors, material for building, and new drywall. Okay. So following that inspection on January 16th, did you issue a statement of violation or request for hearing? I did, yes, on June 14th, um, 2024. Okay, and that's listed on pages 46 and 47 of the packet? Correct. Okay, and... Um, Same code violation, nothing has changed? Correct. All right, if we could turn to page 48 and 49, it appears to be a notice of hearing for today's hearing. Um, that also was issued on June 14th? That's correct, yes. Okay, so how did you send the statement of violation and notice of hearing to the property owner? They are sent regular mail, certified mail, and posted at the property. Okay, did you also post it at City Hall? I did, yes. Is that reflected in your affidavit of service on pages 50 and 51? Yes. Okay. And when you sent it by certified mail, did you, did you receive the green card back on that certified mailing? We did, yes. Okay. And is that what you handed me just before the hearing? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tender into evidence pages 29 through 55 of the packet as well as the green card showing it, it was received. All right, go ahead and accept into evidence as exhibit number one, pages 29 through 55 of the packet, and I'll also attach the signed green card that uh, looks like it was delivered on 6-17-2024. Thank you. I have no other questions for Ms. Mills. Ms. Mills, uh, in regard to, it sounds like there may be some permit application that was applied for. What uh, is the city looking for in regard to deadline to comply and then any sort of fine thereafter if uh, the property is not brought into compliance? Um, the city would fine $150 a day um, and 30 days to bring it into compliance. 
And just so I'm clear on this, is is the violate the one five three zero one Second Street East? Is that for all? Does this violation cover all eight units, or is this a specific unit within that building? It covers the entire property. Okay, so in my order, as long as I just include the 15301 Second Street East, that would uh, properly identify the property that's subject to this violation? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone here on behalf of Wolfpack Holdings or the property owner? All right. Come on forward, sir. Sir, what is your name? Kevin Byrne. <clears throat> Say that again. Kevin Byrne. How do you spell your last name? B-Y-R-N-E. <clears throat> All right. And what is your relationship to Wolfpack Holdings, LLC? I'm the sole owner of Wolfpack. All right. So you're manager, manager of the LLC? Yeah, manager okay. of the LLC. Yeah. All right. Uh, Mr. Byrne, I'm going to give you an opportunity to tell me anything you want to tell me, but this is your opportunity to cross-examine or ask questions of Ms. Mills about her testimony. Do you have any questions for Ms. Mills? No, I don't. All right. Very good. Okay. Uh, Mr. Byrne, what would you like to tell me? This is your opportunity to uh, present any evidence you want, tell me anything you want to tell me, call any witnesses, show me any documents, or anything like that. Yeah, so we, um, we, we didn't realize that we had to pull a permit just to do the flooring which is what the intent was, just to do some flooring. And then um, the only drywall that's in there is, a, is there's a, um, a closet that was a very large closet, so we split the closet in two is all really that we were doing with the intent of in the future pull a permit for installing a washer and dryer, but we weren't going to do that until we pulled that permit. So when the stop work order came, um, I tried to pull the permit myself, but because it was under an LLC, they kicked it back, so I had to hire a general contractor. General contractor submitted the permit. He told me we were good, and that's when work continued again. Apparently, we were not good because they came back with additional, um, additional comments. So uh, last week, I personally went downstairs and met with a uh, planner, and um, we addressed any questions that they had. And so now we have resubmitted as of this morning, including the contract with the contractor and all the FEMA, every stuff. So you can probably see it in the system now. I don't know if it's been approved yet, but the permit may actually get approved today. So it's everything submitted and good to go. And the reason when we are intending on doing all the units, so when we got the work order for the one, we just said, well, we might as well pull a permit for the whole building because we are going to do every unit. So, and it's well within the FEMA rules, so there's no issues. All right. Thank you, Mr. Byrne. Mr. Trask, do you have any questions for Mr. Byrne? Since he just per, uh, issued uh, the building permit application today, do you foresee any complications with that, or do you believe that you've checked all the boxes with the permit application and provided everything that is necessary? So just to correct, the, the original permit was submitted months ago. You mean the application? Application, was I apologize. Right. Application was submitted months ago. Comments came back. We resubmitted. I met with him last week to try and make sure I checked all the box. We tried to get it open before this hearing. Um, it didn't happen. And I believe all the boxes are checked. So I met with him in person. I've got his card right here. We're talking, but he's got to review it. We did everything he asked. So. Okay. I have no other questions then. Thank you. All right. And Mr. Byrne, uh, Ms. Trask took the uh, thought out of my mind because I want to make sure 30 days is enough time. I don't want to, you know, you sound like you're trying to do the right thing, hiring a contractor and applying for a building permit. That's fantastic. So um, it, it sounds like 30 days you should be able to get this permit issued. I hope so. On your side at least. I, I, on my side, yeah. As okay. long as they review it and they don't come back with anything, you know, crazy. All right. um, if you want to give me more time, feel free. If you think 30 days is fine, yeah, well, go back. Sure, sir. And, and basically, in that regard, uh, always in these situations, if we get to the end of that 30 days, I'm here every, every month uh, okay. on the same Monday. Okay. So you can always come back before me if there's some kind of issue. Just let the city know that you need to come back before me. And if there's some delay on your end or your contractor's end or even the city's end, 
and you need more time, let me know. But okay. I, I certainly understand it. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, anything else you want to tell me today about this violation? No, sir. All right. Uh, you can have a seat, sir. Are there any members of the public that have direct knowledge about this code violation that would like to present anything to me today? Any members of the public? All right. Seeing none. Well, Mr. Trask, anything else on this one? We just ask that you find the violation of uh, Section 8652, um, allow the property only 30 days to come into compliance or suffer a fine of $150 a day for each day that the property remains in noncompliance. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Based upon the testimony, or thank you, Mr. Trask, based upon the testimony of Ms. Mills, as well as the admission uh, by Mr. Byrne that they uh, did the work and at least didn't have a permit, I'm going to go ahead and find that the violation did exist and, and still exist. Give the uh, owner 30 days from today's date to go ahead and correct the violation. If it's not corrected, there'll be a $150 a day fine thereafter. Uh, Mr. Byrne, again, if for whatever reason we get to the end of that time, I reserve jurisdiction to give you more time if that's what you need. So uh, just be proactive about that. And if that's something that you need me to consider, just make sure you, know, you notify the city in enough time before the next hearing. All right. Is there anything else before me today, Mr. Trask? No, thank you. All right. That concludes today's hearings. Everyone have a wonderful day.